The Dawning is back, and with it comes the best version of Glacioclasm we've ever had in Destiny 2. Not only does the new perk pull bring two incredibly strong god rolls for PvE, but it actually fixes the biggest weakness it had in PvP. I'm gonna list out every version to look out for and show you why this third iteration of Glacioclasm could take the title as the best fusion rifle in the game. Yes, that's right, this is the third version of Glacioclasm we've got in Destiny 2, leaving the perk pool this year as Shot Swap and Offhand Strike from Column 3, and in Column 4, Harmony and Kickstarter are also saying goodbye. Kickstart and Offhand Strike might be tough for some to say goodbye to, but we're also getting some pretty great stuff to replace it. Column 3 is now being joined by Overflow and Heating Up, and Column 4 now has Control Burst and Successful Warm Up added to the perk pool. But Let's talk stats, because while we have stats that have stayed the same, bringing back the old Glacio stats is a mixed bag. Glacioclasm is still a high impact frame with a slow base charge rate of 960 milliseconds. It fires five high damage bolts and in the Crucible usually requires three of those five bolts to hit to take down another Guardian, four if the Guardian's running 10 resilience. Glacioclasm is by far the highest base range high impact fusion rifle in the game with 11 more range stat than Loaded Question and Mid is Reckoning. It can reach 98 range before any perks are active at all. For its archetype, it also still has the highest stability at 29 and highest recoil direction at 78. So that's three incredible stats right there between range, stability, and recoil direction. Like I said though, that means the bad stats have stayed too. For starters, that long charge time. But for PvE, it also means the lowest reload speed on a fusion rifle in the entire game. Not just for high impacts, the lowest reload speed of any of them. Then for PvP, we've got the lowest aim assist stat out of all the high impacts at 55. It's still a very workable number, higher than pretty much all adaptives and rapids, but it is a factor. And in my tier list video, I placed it below several other high impacts like Loaded Question for that alone. All high impacts connect their shots well, and if Glacio had something else to help it stand out, it would have the chance to fly higher in PvP, and I'm happy to say, today, it gets that chance. Let's talk about that first, and then tackle PvE because I am stoked that the one thing I wanted to see come to Glacioclasm in PvP was granted to us charge time options. And remember, if you like detailed info like this on Destiny 2 weapons, be sure to hit that subscribe button. My new puppy is asking you very politely. Okay, successful warm-up unlocks high impacts potential for aggressive plays and taking on multiple opponents at the same time. It's only currently available on two other high impact fusion rifles, Mid is Reckoning and Wise and Rebuke, and it takes a high impacts charge time from 960 milliseconds to a competitive 600 millisecond charge time after an elimination. That's between the speed of a rapid and an adaptive, the fastest fusions in the game. The perk stays active for seven seconds after a kill too, so you got plenty of time to find your next target and don't have to worry about rushing anywhere fast. I've fallen in love with this perk on high impacts and I ranked Midas and Wizen higher for it in every review I've done. I value this single perk more than any other on a high impact fusion rifle in PvP. It's that important to me. Having five high impact bolts come at you in 600 milliseconds is crazy, and you can use that to pull off plays that would be impossible otherwise with this slow firing archetype. Now we've still got some classics like Golden Tricorn, Eye of the Storm, and High Impact Reserves for PvP perks, but in my opinion they're going to fall short of successful warm up. I think high impact reserves is the one perk I would give a pass to someone if they just showed me a roll and was like, is this good? I'm definitely not going to tell them no. As I go over in my charge time guide, high impact reserves fixes high impact fusions to 3 bolt all resilience levels instead of just through 9. It just can't compare to the 38% speed increase that successful warm up will give. Golden Tricorn gives more damage and can do the funny 2 bolt damage stacking if you get to the times 2 of the perk, while Eye of the Storm is just more accuracy but damage and accuracy aren't the problems that you face here. They're great things, don't get me wrong, but lack of speed is the thing that is gonna get you into trouble with Glacioclasm. In the third column, Heating Up was just a perfect addition to match successful warmup in the fourth. Heating Up activates on an elimination just like successful warmup and grants 15 stability, 20 recoil direction, minus 15% accuracy cone size, and minus 15% accuracy cone growth per stack, and you can get up to two stacks. 
The important thing I want you to see on this perk is the 20 recoil direction and the accuracy cone growth. The recoil direction because no matter how you set up your barrel, with just one kill you're up to near perfect 98 recoil direction, and then the accuracy cone growth because usually you just get accuracy cone changes, not accuracy cone growth changes. Under pressure doesn't even give this, and firmly planted does, but it's very minimal, 8.5% on fusions. This is 15%, and it can stack up to double that, creating an extremely accurate shot. I've recently been blown away on Deliverance with the heating up and successful warm-up combo, and I'm so excited to see it here on Glacioclasm, where it'll be even stronger. We've also got Under Pressure and Killing Win in the third column. Under Pressure is always a great boost of accuracy to go for, and I found on Glacioclasm in particular, it makes running full bore easier thanks to the stability boost that Under Pressure gives. If you're trying to grab a roll that makes that first shot super accurate with something like High Impact Reserves or Eye of the Storm in the fourth column, then Under Pressure is also a great pairing for that since it's active from the get-go. Killing Wind is awesome because it just gives so much. It bumps your range stat by 20, gives you 40 handling, 50 mobility, and increases your actual damage falloff distance. One of the only two perks in the game that can still do that. It activates on an elimination, just like successful warm up as well, making it a great pairing just like heating up was. What I would not recommend is slide shot, subsistence, or overflow in PvP. Most of them are just overshadowed by what I already listed, but slide shot is particularly deceiving because it only gives that plus 20 range and plus 30 stability on the very first bolt of the burst, not even your whole first shot so I'd stay away from that. Reservoir Burst, Control Burst, and Fragile Focus will also never matter in PvP because you won't have enough ammo for Reservoir, Control Burst only lasts for 2 seconds and way too short to find a target, and Fragile Focus is unnecessary for how much range you already have on this fusion. Now let's talk about the god rolls you want to keep for Glacioclasm in PvP. No matter which combo of perks I go for, I'm going to want to push the range as the strength of this fusion. So I'm going to go full bowl for the barrel and projection fuse on the battery. Extended barrel and hammer forge are going to be my backup choices here, and so whether RNG just doesn't give you full bore or you feel you have trouble controlling the bolts, you've got extended barrel and hammer forge is what to look for next. I've never felt that arrowhead break was necessary on Glacio, but that would be my absolute last resort I'd recommend if you're having trouble with the fusion. For the masterwork, you can go straight range, but I found I'm more competitive when I go with a charge time masterwork. As of this season, it no longer decreases damage to have one, and I'm pushing the range enough in other places I feel comfortable going without range here. That said, if you do get a range masterwork from RNG, it's equally as good if not better in most players' eyes. Now for some set rolls. I think under pressure and successful warm up is probably gonna be the golden standard on the new PvP Glacioclasm. Under pressure helps you control that accuracy running full bore and get successful warm up running. Then it's even more accurate for your next shot as you swing into gear faster than an adaptive fusion ride. So that full build is full bore, projection fuse, under pressure, and successful warm up with a charge time masterwork. I'd top it off with a targeting mod to work with all that range and accuracy. Now, I think you could run this entire roll exactly and swap under pressure with either killing win or heating up with great success. Heating up just places all your benefits into your follow up shots, but that follow up shot is near perfect recoil and is loaded with accuracy and speed. Then with Killing Wind, I just replace Full Bore with Extended Barrel if you got it. This is because Killing Wind comes packed with range and handling, so once it's active, you're going to max out your range at 100 anyway. You might as well add some Recoil Direction stat in there too. So there are three alterations of the successful warm-up roll to go for, but I can't go on without recommending the farthest reaching Fusion Rifle one burst available. Killing Wind and High Impact Reserves. This already exists in old versions of Glacio, so not quite as exciting, but if you run Killing Wind and High Impact Reserves, you can hit a 24 meter one burst on your follow up shot. I don't like this roll as much because it's just slow compared to the successful warm up options, but if you're into it, go for Extended Barrel, Projection Fuse, Killing Wind, and High Impact Reserves with the Charge Time Masterwork. Killing Wind will max out the range and push out the damage distance, and High Impact Reserves will add on to that damage. Go ahead and throw on a Counterbalance mod to help control that shot at such a far distance. I usually don't recommend that for normal gameplay, but I found that if you're just going for those insane shots, Counterbalance worked better. On to PvE. Huge upgrade for Glacioclasm and PvE content. Finally, avoid fusion that can bring the boss damage. 
Just like we recently covered on Scatter Signal, Overflow and Control Burst are going to immediately stand out to everyone as go-to options and I don't blame them. Not just because it's a fantastic perk combo that I'll for sure lay out a god roll for in a second, but because Overflow fixes the ridiculously low reload speed stat that Glacioclasm is stuck with. Just a perfect addition to the perk pool. But before we jump into that role, I do want to bring your attention back to some old perks that are still here that we can mix in. I'm frequently not running a fusion for strictly boss damage. I'm using it to clear adds because I'm either running double special or I've got a build like using lucky pants to deal big primary damage. So perk combos that can provide a bit of utility and boss damage appeal to me. In previous years, Repulsor Brace felt a bit like a gimmick because you couldn't pair it with the big damage of Reservoir Burst when it came time to damage the boss. Now that we've got Controlled Burst in the fourth column, you can actually run Repulsor Brace to protect you during ad clears and then still bust out Controlled Burst during damage phase. Now you will have to deal with that slow reload speed again, but I like that Bungie has been adding some utility perks to the third column here like they did with Slice on Scatter Signal because it adds some depth over just choosing more ammo for damage. You've got options now. Now, just like Loaded Question, you've also got Overflow and Reservoir Burst as an option. Remember, Reservoir Burst isn't just explosions for ad clear on your extra shots from your overloaded magazine. It's actually 25% extra damage on your bolts as well. Control Burst is only 20% extra damage. I think either way I push it, Control Burst is going to be the better option for me, whether I'm running Repulsor Brace or Overflow. But if you're going strictly ad clear, then Overflow and Reservoir Burst would most likely be your best option. So what are the full PvE god rolls for this year's Glacioclasm? For any roll I go for, I'd want to build it out with this foundation. Fluted Barrel, Enhanced Battery, and a Charge Time Masterwork. The Charge Time Masterwork is always a given since it's just free speed now in PvE, and Enhanced Battery will be a free extra round in the mag, which also means going from 10 to 12 in the mag if I'm going for Overflow. Fluted is the one that might have some people questioning me, but here's the thing. This is the highest base range available on a fusion rifle. I'm not worried about damage fall off and I don't really care about recoil direction or stability. I'm going to hit my body shots against PVE targets. So really handling becomes the most important thing in this column and fluted barrel is going to give me plus 15 of it. This doesn't just help the fusion feel better. You're increasing your ready stow and ADS speed with the handling stat. Arrowhead break and corkscrew rifling will be the backup options for this with your RNG. So for your full boss melter glacioclasm, you'd want fluted, enhanced battery, overflow, and control burst with the charge time masterwork. For full ad clear, you'd want the same thing but overflow and reservoir burst instead. I think either of these will do great in pretty much all scenarios, but I'm going to be looking hard for that role with repulsive race and control burst because one, I often run Hunter and don't worry about reload as much anyways, but also my time in PvE always takes me somewhere in between ad clear and DPS and who knows when we'll see this combo again on a fusion rifle. No matter what activity you're looking to roll Glacioclasm for, I think it's fair to say this new iteration is one of, if not the best fusion rifle in the game. I feel like I'm saying that a lot lately, but Bungie has been putting out some banger fusion rifles. Adding successful warm up to Glacioclasm was a game changer for PvP, and adding overflow and control burst to PvE was just as meaningful. The new perks are definitely amazing on their own for this archetype, but it's the way they integrate into this fusion rifle in particular that make them really shine. Like successful warm up mixing with the highest range already available on a PvP fusion and overflow fixing the lowest reload stat we have on a fusion rifle. While some players will mourn the loss of kickstart, I think the dev team outdid themselves with this one and many fusion players will be happy to hear me finally place Glacioclasm in the S tier on all accounts. The question that will need time to determine is how high in the ranks of S tier did it climb? Let me know what you think. And remember, while you're grinding for the fusion, don't forget to one, equip the Starfarer ship found either in collections from season 12 or bought brand new from Eva Levante if you've never got it. 
This is gonna let you generate tons of dawning spirit just playing the game. Then two, be sure to masterwork your oven. Do it on each character because three, you'll wanna complete the weekly bounties on each character for an easy 10 dawning spirit from each one. Finally, four, purchase the upgrades for double perks and then the one to focus limited weapon selection so you can do just Glacioclasm. May RNG have mercy on you. This has been Legolith Lash, until next time, GG.